Greetings, I am Herbert Herbaderb, and today I'm going to build this 8.8cm Flak 37 gun. This is the plastic model by Warlord Games. The plastic is made by Italeri and you can also get this kit in Italeri's packaging. The instructions and decals are very likely to be different in that box, but the rest of the model should be exactly the same. When I learned that this model was available in plastic I was pretty excited, so I had to have it, and now I'm finally getting around to building it. On the back of the box we see some images of the gun and its crew all nicely painted up. There's also images of the included decal sheet and stat card, and a few paragraphs about the Flak 37. Inside the box we find this packaging of Metal Crew. No, not the Sabaton song, but Metal Figures. I'm a bit less excited by Metal Figures and I do wish they were plastic, but I did know they were metal when I bought the kit, so it doesn't really come as a surprise at all. There are seven of these figures and to be honest, I don't think they look too bad. The sculpts are pretty decent and they're fairly neat too, though they do have some mould lines that will need to be cleaned up and there are some bent parts, like the rangefinder and some of the shells. I'm sure they won't be too hard to bend back into place though. I think I'm going to leave these as they are until I decide to paint the model. Maybe by then there'll be a plastic crew instead of these metal ones. We'll see. For now, they could just be blue tacked onto bases if I happen to need them for a game. The more important thing you'll find in the box are these two plastic sprues full of pieces of gun. Actually, it's one sprue that's been cut in half to fit in the box, but that's not really worth worrying about. The parts are relatively neat, though there are some visible mould lines, and there's some areas where there's flashing, which is a bit unusual for bolt action kits, but it's nothing too bad and should be easy enough to remove. Though obviously it would be nicer if it weren't there. The detailing is pretty decent and there's a lot of fine, thin looking bits and pieces. I would definitely recommend being careful with those parts when removing them from the sprue. There's also some ammunition, which would be good if you were going to put this model on a base, or maybe you could put them on the base of one of the crew figures. The kit also includes some decals, just like the box said. There's a bunch of kill markings here for both tanks and aircraft, as well as a handful of identifying markers. These look pretty decent. We also get this stat card which includes a bunch of the information you'll probably find very helpful if you were to use this model in a game of bolt action. And of course there's an instruction booklet. This is as good as Warlord's other recent instruction booklets which is to say pretty good. The instructions are simple enough to understand and follow. There's also a painting guide at the back of the booklet. It doesn't seem to say which brand of colours it recommends but I believe they're Vallejo. The first step is to assemble the two halves of the breech end of the gun. This is pretty easy. The instructions kind of look like they're suggesting you should sandwich the end of the gun between these two parts, but I figured it would be easier to add the gun after these parts were solidly joined together. As you can see, the joins aren't perfect, but they can be cleaned up once the glue is set. I then glue the gun into the opening for it, at the opposite end from the breech. The gun slots into place nice and easy and it looks pretty good. It did require a bit of cleanup, but on the other hand, the barrel didn't need to be drilled out, which is always nice. Then this tiny little thing goes into the mounting point here below the breech on the left side of the gun. I had to nudge it into position with my knife because my fingers were just too fat to get the job done. I don't know what it is, what matters is that it's installed. Next I assemble two of these cylinders. These seem to be part of the gun's elevation system. Joining these parts together is pretty simple. There are guide pins that help you get the halves of the cylinders aligned properly. Again, the joins aren't perfect, but I tidied it up after the glue was dry and that was pretty easy to do. Then I joined these two parts together. The larger main part had a fair bit of flash that needed to be cleaned up, but it wasn't too bad and the two pieces went together very easily. There's keying to help guide the positioning, though there is still a bit of a gap at the top. I think maybe that's meant to be there and if it's not, well, I don't think it will be especially visible anyway, so that's okay. Then the cylinders I made before can clip into these mounting things here. They should go into position with the end of the cylinder with the hole in it over the boxy bit, for lack of better description. This should stay clipped into the part without glue. I don't add glue just now, because having these movable will make the next step so much easier. In fact, if you were to glue these into place, it might be impossible to do the next step at all, which would be annoying. In that next step, I insert one of these rams into a cylinder. The fit was a little bit tight, but it did go in. The other end can join the gun. I leave this unglued for now as well. This is a little bit fiddly, but not too bad really. The only thing I'm really worried about is how thin and weak the rod feels. I would definitely suggest being careful with this. It would be annoying to have it break. 
Then I take this gun side holder bit and join it to the gun. Then I manipulate the piston part so the lower part of the gun side joins the base part which the cylinders are joined to. This is easy enough. Just be careful that the ram part is straight and you don't break it so that everything looks right. This is where we determine the gun's elevation so make sure you've got that how you want it. Next we can set up the piston on the other side so that it's nice and straight. Having the other side set up already does make this side much easier and less fiddly to do, though I did still need to use tweezers to pull the ram up out of the cylinder. It shouldn't need to be moved anymore so it can be glued into position. Then I attach the left frame part. This one is a lot more busy looking than the other one. That's probably why it had a bit more flash than the other one and needed more cleanup. That wasn't too bad though, and it does seem to fit well enough. Now it's time to add a bunch of details. First, this box with greeblies. I have no idea what it is. I'm sure you're all very very surprised by that. It's got a slot in the back that helps it to mount to this protrusion here. No real challenge. I add glue after slotting it into place when test fitting because the friction was holding it in place quite firmly. The Tamiya extra thin glue I'm using will quite easily seep between those joints and bond everything nicely. Next comes this set of bars. This goes into place here and there's a hole to mount it. The square part acts as a kind of keying so that you don't get the part on all wibbly wobbly. I leave this to set for a short while and then I add the seat, which kind of looks like a tiny shirt button. This mounts onto a pin quite easily, though you may have to give it a bit of a nudge to get it nice and level. Then it's time to work on the other side of the gun. I first add this little box thing. It has a D-shaped keying to make sure you put it on the right way. I had to apply a fair bit of pressure here to get it all the way into place. Next comes this connecting rod part, whatever it is the small pin goes into the hole on the gun trunnion and the other end goes down here like so. I probably don't really need to say it but this is a fairly thin part and it could easily be broken, especially when you're applying pressure so do be careful. Then this, I think it's a sight, it mounts into the hole on the end of the previous part I just applied. Nothing too tricky about it. Below that goes a wheel. I'm assuming this is for gun elevation or rotation. And this also goes into place very easily. This thin bit of plastic is next. I think it's a lever for the breech. Maybe it has another name, but I have no idea what that might be. I found this kind of fiddly to get into place even with tweezers. I didn't feel like I could apply enough pressure with the tweezers. I used my fat fingers and got it more or less into what looks like the right position. Something to note is the actual part here looks a bit different to that displayed in the instructions, though it's close enough. Then comes whatever this is. Maybe it's a control panel. It has some keying to ensure it goes on the right way, though it was still a bit fiddly to place because it sits a little bit further in than the surrounding bits, but I got it eventually. Then another one of those rectangular box things. I think it might have been better to add both of these parts when I added the first one. The other parts are a little bit in the way. Well, can't go back and do it differently now, but maybe you can. After that, I attach another control wheel here. This is just as easy as the previous wheel. Just make sure that it's on nice and straight. The fit does have a tiny bit of play in it. Here's another set of bar things that will hold a seat. This took a bit of nudging to get it to sit level with the gun, but it wasn't hard to put on. And then a seat. It goes on just as easily as the other seat did, only needing a little bit of nudging until it looked level. And then I move on to the base. The first thing I did with these was to glue the bottoms onto the leggy bits. I'm sure they have a proper name, but I can't think what it is. And I'm sure you understand what I mean. These are pretty simple to put together. Once the glue on those has set up, I put the shorter leg assemblies onto the main base part. I leave those unglued for now. The fit is tight enough that they stay there with friction alone. Also, be sure to put them on the right way up. Otherwise, there'll be trouble when you try to put the feet on. I then put the bottom of the main frame part on. This will hold the shorter arm parts in place without need of glue. This really only goes on one way, and the shape of the parts should make it obvious how it goes together. Once I'm satisfied with that, I add some glue to some of the gaps on the bottom so that it seeps in and everything gets bonded together nicely. Though I still leave it so the short leg parts are movable. Then I add two of these things, which I think are kind of gears for raising and lowering the fold up arms. They mount very easily to these two raised parts on either side of this one support arm. These geary things are a bit useless without a way to apply rotation, so I attach these wheels. These are just as easy to install as the previous control wheels. And as before, the fit isn't super tight so there's a little bit of play, which means I needed to nudge them around so they wouldn't be all wonky. Next I add the travel lock for when the gun is being transported. 
It has some sink marks on one side and unfortunately that's the side that should be facing upwards, which is a bit annoying, but the part does go into place easily enough. Then come the feet. These go on each end of the frame, which makes sense, and the notch they all have on one edge should face out away from the centre of the frame. There's no keying here, but I don't feel like it's really needed. This is pretty simple. I leave the feet to bond for a bit, and then it's time to show why I left the legs movable. It's so that we can position the legs such that they're nice and level, and I didn't think that would work properly until after I'd glued the feet on. There isn't really anything too tricky to do here, just make sure that it's kind of level. Once I'm satisfied with how the frame is sitting, that is to say it isn't rocking back and forth, I apply glue. Easy enough. I then attach the gun shield. There are guides into which the front parts of the gun should slot, but I found they were a tiny bit wide. The way I did this was to add glue on one side first, and then kind of force the other bit into place. It's not especially difficult to do this, though it has resulted in the shield being a little bit wonky, but I don't think it's super noticeable. Next comes this little ring thing. I glue it into place on the bottom of the gun. This makes it so the mounting pin is the right size to fit the frame. There's a small cap that is meant to go on the bottom of this, but it seemed kind of redundant, so I left it off. Then we might as well do one more fiddly thing, and install these bar things that join the upper parts of the gun shield to the gun. These probably also have a fancy name, but I don't know it. And they are quite fiddly, but obviously not impossible to get into place. The right one is slightly more tricky than the left owing to some bars already being installed in the way, but I did eventually get it into place using my knife. Then to secure it, I add glue and then admire my handiwork. So many little bits. I'm glad this is mostly going to be grey when it's painted. To finish the model I glue the gun onto the base. I'm sure you could magnetise this, or even leave it unglued so that you could rotate the gun around and such, but I don't really feel a need for that. So that's the 8.8cm Flak 37 anti-air or anti-tank or I guess really anti-everything gun in plastic from Warlord Games and Italeri complete. I don't have any other guns like this so I can't do a comparison, but I would confidently put this up against the metal version that Warlord makes. Though I do wish this came with the limbers like the metal version seems to. I feel like that would have given the kit a lot more flexibility. It's only a minor complaint though, and I'm sure you could probably find the limbers separately anyway, if you really really wanted. I rather like how this gun has turned out. Not only is it an interesting piece, but it also looks really cool. Despite it being one of the more fiddly kits I've built in 28mm scale, it was pretty easy to put together, and relatively quick too. The mould lines and flash were pretty easy to remove, but you do have to be pretty careful with some of the tiny thin pieces, and those things did add a bit of extra time to how long the build took, which isn't surprising. But still, it could easily be put together in an evening. I rather enjoyed the build too. I would happily do it again, and maybe I will. I haven't looked into how many of these you can field in a bolt action army, or how effective they are against tanks or planes, but being an 88mm gun I assume it puts out reasonable damage probably as a trade-off for being less mobile, if at all. The box does say that you need something big to tow this gun. Either way, it's probably not something I'll field often, but I think it's really cool to have up my sleeve. And in my opinion, the rule of cool is the best way to play bolt action. The detailing on this kit is pretty good. The fiddliness in assembly is kind of the price you pay for a lot of that detail though. There's a whole bunch of things that could probably have been easily clumped together into single parts. But if they were to do that, they would lose the nice three-dimensional look of having bars with space between them all over the place. I'm sure it's not a perfect replica, and there are bound to be some details omitted, and that's fine. It is a gaming piece after all. You can expect some compromises, and it does look pretty decent anyway. I'm a bit less impressed by the metal figures. I'm not a big fan of working with metal models, but they really don't look too bad at all. I haven't bothered to clean them up for the video here, mostly because of laziness, but as you can probably see they shouldn't really need a whole lot of work to be ready for paint. I'll be hoping a plastic crew for the gun becomes available before I get around to painting it, but I have my doubts that's a thing Warlord are really worried about, so I'll probably end up with no choice but to use these metal guys. There could be worse things. Enough rambling, what do you think about this flak gun? Have you built it too? Does it strike fear into your heart when you encounter it on the field? Or do you chuckle and run it over in your KV? 
Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, why not sub here on YouTube, join our community on Discord, follow me on social media or watch me stream on Twitch. And if you really like what I do, please consider supporting over on Patreon or perhaps by purchasing a shirt or mug from my merch store. Links to all of those things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thank you for watching. Farewell.